morning, everybody. Um, delighted you can join us here this morning for our research bites from the UCD's Institute of Food and Health. And this morning, Dr. Gorino Makari is going to, to speak to us. So Gorino is a research scientist. In fact, he's a bio Informatician, bioinformatician, sorry, struggling over the word on a Monday morning here <laughs> at the Centre for Food Safety um, with Professor Shea Fanning's uh, group here at UCD. His background is in genomics analysis and he studies foodborne pathogens as well as the beneficial bacteria that can be found in fermented foods. Currently, his work is focusing on the application of novel sequencing technologies for characterizing microorganisms and the epidemiology of important pathogens. I suppose very significantly, his work has include, included research on the recent SARS-CoV-2 outbreak in Ireland. And I think that's what you're going to speak to us about this morning, Marina. So you're very welcome and over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, again, and thank you, Geraldine, uh, for the invite for the Research Bite series at the UCD uh, Institute of Food and Health. And again, uh, thank you, Dolores, for the kind presentation and everybody this morning for this meeting here. Uh, today, I'm going to present the project SARS Food, as mentioned before, so investigating the presence of SARS-CoV-2 in foods and food production environments using reverse transcript transcription polymerase chain reaction and whole uh, virus genome sequencing. This project was funded by the World Health Organization. And uh, then again, I'm a research scientist, molecular biologist as a background and bioinformatician in UCD at the Center for Food Safety which is part of the Institute of Food and Health and based myself at the School of Public Health, Physiotherapy and Sports Science. Uh, the project I'm going to present today have had uh, a huge impact on the activities of the laboratory in terms of space uh, that we have been using, uh, use of infrastructure, infrastructures, machines, and also have had, uh, have had um, a several collaborators uh, usually, uh, I think this, the, the greetings go at the end uh, of the presentation, but this time I really want to say thanks to everyone who helped with this effort. First of all, Professor Shea Fanning, uh, who had the intuition of initiate this survey and the help of many people affiliated to the Center of Food Safety, uh, such as Lauren Russell, uh, Francisco Rodriguez, Alex Floss, Jones, and also who helped uh, with the preparation of and uh, validation of the um, uh, procedures. Siobhan McCarthy and uh, Charlene, Charlene Bennett. Some parts of the project are still ongoing, even though the core of it is at the final step with the aim of presenting uh, officially the output of the study very soon. The presentation for today is going to be around 20 minutes and I have about 40 slides. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to even send uh, comments and I will be very happy to answer at the end. We applied for this grant uh, in September with uh, results expected very close, uh, but they post uh, then uh, were postponed to almost, almost the end of October. Then there were delays on contracts and we knew that the whole concept of the project was supposed to be delivered before the end of December 2020. In principle, it was a three months project. And then we, uh, when everything was in place, basically we should have uh, completed the study in technically two weeks. Then likely um, we had the opportunity of an extension, which was due in February. Now we are in the process of reviewing the final report and we wanted to provide even more um, data to WHO running different parallel projects, uh, which I will mention uh, later in the presentation. They will be included in the final document providing even uh, I suppose, more comprehensive study valuable for public health uh, purposes. Here, um, just a bit of background on the topic I will present today. Uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 uh, is the causative agent of the unknown etiology pneumonia cases that were reported the 31st uh, December 2019, identified in Wuhan city in China. The cases were all linked to the Wuhan uh, once a uh, seafood wholesale uh, market, uh, which trades um, a variety of uh, live animals, uh, animal species. The World Health Organization declared uh, immediately a global emergency and the disease was named uh, COVID-19. 
In addition to bats, uh, other animals are considered as possible source uh, of the virus. However, uh, there's no evidence uh, in the role of domesticated food producing animals and the meat derived from them and also the associated processing environments. All these unknown uh, scenarios represent uh, a public health challenge uh, because necessitate um, the development of suitable diagnostic protocols, um, implementation of um, intervention measures along the food chain, and in order to recognize as well the possible transmission routes. Now, the disease is easily uh, transmitted and spreading from person to person by a cough, um, uh, sneeze, uh, respiratory droplets, or close contact with infected people. And for this reason uh, of concern are uh, processed foods and food packaging wherein the SARS-CoV-2 could reach consumers following cross-contamination. During the peak of the pandemic in Ireland, uh, but the, uh, internationally, uh, some essential workplaces and specifically the meat processing plants um, proved vulnerable to, to outbreaks of COVID-19. For example, a major outbreak in German uh, meat plant resulted in more than uh, 1,400 uh, of the 6,200 employees that became infected. So in Ireland, unfortunately, we had similar data in different meat plants around the country. And the aim of this study was to provide data on the detection of SARS-CoV-2 in selected food matrices and in selected food process processing uh, environments. And the consequential genetic study of the viruses recovered with the aim of track and make public the data in available databases. For doing so, uh, the three months uh, plan was divided in two working packages, where the first working package was the identification of SARS-CoV-2 RNA in foods uh, using the reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction. And the working package two included the characterization of positive samples by whole virus genome sequencing for the subsequent comparative genome analysis. <coughs> the first piece um, of work was to, to find and understand the size of samples and the numbers that could have given a representativity of the, of the food chain. It is not easy to design a plan uh, for a short time and delivering as well results that are uh, meaningful. There are different models that uh, we uh, looked at and we decided to proceed with a pragmatic approach and providing um, the qualitative results, of course, indeed the presence of uh, or absence of the virus uh, in, in these matrices. And we use a confidence limit of 0.99 and 0.10 as the upper confidence level was the approach that we finally choose. And the number 51 uh, was uh, the samples that in 20 days uh, we were supposed to, to sample and analyze for, for this project. We considered different matrices. We had food samples and in the specific we plan to sample raw meats, vegetables and fruits, but also um, abiotic surfaces of high touch uh, locations, for example, in, um, for example, the air conditioning uh, units, tops or door handles. And also in the same processing plants, we included the sewage samples that could have given a track of the presence of the virus on the sites. And this has been demonstrated in different studies, including SARS-CoV-2 <clears throat> in sewage and bodies water led by Professor Uwe Meyer and Nicola Fletcher here in UCD, respectively at the School of Biomedical, um, uh, Biomedical Science and the School of uh, Veterinary Medicine. In total, in two and a half weeks, we have sampled and tested 105 raw meats, 101 fre uh, fresh ready-to-eat vegetables, and 157 um, fresh or frozen ready-to-eat uh, fruits. Just to give an idea of the type of food we sampled, I reported here the plots uh, representing the data breakdown. Uh, for instance, we sampled poultry and pork, which included pork meats, sausages, and also organs and fillets. 
uh, fillets. And um, for seafood matrices, we sampled oysters, which have the characteristics to be eaten raw and also mussels and other mollusks, uh, prawns and shrimps, as you can see here in the, in the plot. In terms of vegetables, we had a mixture of ready to eat and matrices that are eaten uh, cooked. And finally, we concentrated the sampling plan on uh, fruits that are mostly coming from different uh, parts of the world and usually are, uh, usually are at, um, raw. In addition to the food samples, all the packagings were included and tested as surface swaps and also were included the skin of bananas as swap samples for a total of 367 samples. We included as well RNA already extracted and stored in minus 80, representing pork, meat, and small fruits collected between January 2018 and uh, December 2019, and uh, representing a retrospective study on the presence of uh, eventual RNA of SARS-CoV-2. For what concern the abiotic surfaces, we developed a kit for companies for safely sampling with swabs and the collection of wastewater that were collected twice from the line of untreated water, including wastewater from building use. And um, we provided as well the protocols uh, to these companies. We analyzed in total 75 samples of swabs and six water samples. Here you can see in the table an idea of the type of samples that we have collected and tested. Now, in terms of methods, uh, we use three different approaches according to procedures suggested in um, available regulations for similar RNA viruses and type of matrices that we included in our study. And um, this was done for taking an account as well of the possible inhibitors uh, of the samples themselves and using different approaches to evaluate the recovery uh, of the virus and inhibitory effect indeed. For example, mollusks by bivalve are considered not an easy matrices for the conservation of the virus outside the intestine for the presence of um, many inactivation enzymes and also possible inhibitor inhibitors for the um, polymerase chain reaction. And also recovering um, the required amount of sample, which is useful for the analysis, is not so easy and requires experience, experience and uh, a lot of time. Uh, for the RNA extraction, we used um, an automatic handling system. And for the reverse transcriptase uh, PCR, we used the Quant Studio 5 by Thermo Scientific. Then again, as control, we used uh, plasmidic DNA and also RNA from positive clinical samples and mango virus uh, as process control that allowed uh, us to evaluate uh, the recover uh, that was excellent for uh, the uh, 1,261 samples in total. Now, um, as, um, as we all know, uh, a virus uh, mutates and the variants occur and a virus um, want to be able to get to the next host, to be able to make more of itself. And that's all a virus cares about. There are, of course, different uh, paths that uh, can be followed for novel mutations. And this is the principle of the second working package of the project. In order to understand the genomics of the virus that potentially involved in foods in the case of detection. I reported here a few notes on the definition that maybe may, might help um, uh, to interpret the data that we are reading and uh, listening every day. Uh, as described in this paper from uh, Rambo and colleagues in 2020, a lineage is a cluster of sequences that are associated with an epidemiological event, for instance, an introduction of the virus into a distinct uh, geographic area with evidence of onward uh, spread. Represented in these three at uh, the root of the phylogeny of SARS-CoV-2, there are two lineages, the A and the B. And the lineage A, for instance, is the Wuhan strain that was sampled the 5th of January 2020. The lineage B has different nucleotide 
and actually it is the one sampled previously uh, on the 26th of December 2019. Now, the most recent common uh, ancestor or MRSEA of the SARS-CoV-2 phylogeny shares the same genome sequence on the two lineages and viruses from both lineage A and B are still circulating in many countries around the world. And by convention, the naming of lineages follows the rules of adding numbers, for example, the lineage B1 or lineage B11 uh, to the lineage. And this needs uh, to meet different conditions. So, for example, the evidence of emergence from an ancestral lineage or into another geographical, uh, geographically distant population. And another parameter is that the lineage identified can themselves act as an ancestor for various lineages that can develop in that area. And this repetitive procedure to add a number um, can be done for maximum three times, three sub-levels, after which new descendant lineages are given an, a new letter. So a B with uh, three ones uh, will become a C1 as clarified in the picture uh, in the slide. And this slide is reported as well, what we know as our variants of concern. So we have the B117, which is the um, uh, UK variant. Then we have the variant P1, which is the Brazilian, B1351 and B1617 and so on. Now, um, the core of the working package, the second working package was to sequence the RNA of samples resulted positive and compare with the databases of genomes sequence both in our facility and freely available in data sets uh, online. The aim was also to implement this tool and that was deployed for supporting the activity of, of the National Virus Reference Laboratory in the national effort of sequencing uh, the positive samples of uh, SARS-CoV-2. We have made available the SOPs and the protocols uh, that can be forked and con uh, consulted and downloaded from different platforms. The protocol, protocol for sequencing follows the Arctic tile PCR amplicon scheme, where the RNA of sample tested positive by RTQ-PCR are the templates for the reverse transcriptase producing cDNA, and then a set of primers are used for the generation of amplicons that are 400 uh, base per length, that they are overlapping and cover all the genome of the virus. The amplicons are then prepared for the sequencing, and the data generated are then analyzed for reconstruct the original uh, genome of the virus. So in terms of uh, approach that we was used to analyze all these samples in a so short time, um, we decided to uh, extract and um, uh, test the samples in pools. So we extract all the samples singularly and then we pull them out in 10 units. And we try to, um, to keep the limit of detection very ample in order to apply a precautionary principle. With this approach, four pools resulted very close to the limit of detection. And for this reason, uh, we decided to test the single RNA structure from each uh, sample. And also we compare uh, the, these samples with uh, nucleic acids extracted again from the uh, original matrices that were stored uh, at minus 20. In fact, uh, the extraction from original samples were repeated and all the samples uh, likely were uh, resulted negative. So um, in our survey, um, again, all the samples resulted negative, but at the same time, we didn't want to leave only a present absence of the, in, uh, for the food chain, um, the risk of present absence uh, of, the, uh, of the virus in the food chain, uh, which was basically the, the mandate of WHO. We thought it was uh, more valuable studying as well other sectors and also test with a more pragmatic experiment the survival of the virus on different food matrices. And if we are able uh, actually to detect the virus at different concentration and store temperatures, but also sampling times, mimicking what, uh, what the food chain is in uh, reality, I think, because we are um, transitioning foods in a so global and um, uh, distance as well, 
from different continents. Uh, we are transporting different type of foods and we have come up with this strategy where spiking the different food matrices and track the viability of the virus at set points in different temperatures of storing the, the, the foods and also thermal abuse uh, conditions. And I'm glad uh, to already present the first parallel study for testing the viability of the virus particles on foods in collaboration with Professor Gerard Barry and Tristan, Dr. Tristan Russell at the School of uh, Veterinary Medicine here in uh, UCD. The experiment was to test the viability of the fine set points of virus particles in two different meats, uh, in for instance, salmon and beef, spiking the samples uh, with vital virus and then storing in two different temperatures. You can see here the uh, orange and blue. Hopefully we'll be able to present the full data set of this study, which will include as well testing um, different uh, packaging. And you can see here that at the moment we obtained the results of the viability of the virus on salmon. And you can see the concentration of the vital uh, virus remaining very high at minus 20s, uh, while there is a decrease on the logarithmic uh, titer after six days from the contamination when the samples are stored at four uh, degrees. Then again, it will be interesting to, to use the same approach for, um, for uh, food packaging and to measure the survival rates of the virus on, for example, stainless steel, uh, or glass or vinyl, so the, the surfaces that are used in the, the food production sites. Um, this definitely will, uh, will support uh, policymakers. In addition to the results that we found uh, testing more than 1,200 uh, foods or food-related matrices to define that uh, how the food chain is safe. However, even uh, though we are able to detect the virus on packaging due to cross-contamination, we need to keep in mind that the risk of getting sick or infected by SARS-CoV-2 by eating or handling food, including frozen food and produce and food packages as well, is considered very low. In addition to this study, we are now part of a large uh, consortium uh, of brilliant scientists in different institutes and part of a structure study funded by SAFI as well for understanding and preventing COVID-19 outbreaks in meat processing plants. This is a project coordinated by Professor Grace Mulcahy and uh, Professor Seamus Franning with different working packages where the main goal is to understand the reason why the outbreaks were and are so prevalent in the meat plants and also find ways to control, detect and also study virus uh, efficiently. This approach can be applied in different indus industries, so also different contexts and other pathogens disease for the future. Like, for example, one of the main goal of uh, the working package that I'm coordinating is to evaluate the performance of a recently developed massively parallel diagnostic assay platform with uh, the aim of releasing a robust protocol for the analysis of next generation sequencing amplicons which workflow is well represented in this scheme um, in the slide. This includes the uh, viral RNA instruction, barcoding and PCR amplification. And then next generation sequencing to quantify the amounts of barcoded cDNA synthesis product products. The aim of our research is, apply, is to apply uh, this approach for many other infectious disease and markers that have an important interest uh, for public health, such as, for example, the detection of um, antimicrobial resistant genes in mixed population of microorganisms in order to predict um, their phenotypes and what's happening in the, uh, in the population. In the context of uh, SARS-CoV-2, and coming back to the project APCO, uh, funded by uh, SFI, uh, we're applying the same concept of the SARS food project funded by WHO, for the study of the genome of the virus isolated in different meat plants environment in order to study basically the phylogeny of the virus detected, comparing them with the national figures and data sets provided in different freely available platforms such as GSAID and resources as Pangolin and Next Strain. Uh, with the possibility to connect eventual outbreaks and using these data for containing uh, infections. And 
Um, with these, I want to uh, really thank you for the opportunity today to bring a little bit of research activities that I'm following at the very moment. And um, thank again all the people involved in the studies I've just presented. Uh, Professor Shay Fanning, which is the director of uh, the Center for Food Safety and the staff in the laboratory at CFS, uh, other collaborators and many others. And of course, uh, the institutions who funded these researchers, uh, researches and uh, of course the World Health Organization and Science uh, Foundation Ireland and again UCD. And I will be very happy to answer uh, to any question you might have. But uh, for now, thank you and uh, keep in touch.